The Legends of Land Show with Brandon Parker. Deconstruct the tactics of world-class land investors and learn tools to build a seven-figure land business. The Legends of Land Show is starting now. All right, I have a treat for you today, my friends, Kellen Faulkner. She is a lifestyle innovator, and just imagine if you could design your perfect life daily, from waking up to when you go to sleep and every moment in between, just trying to optimize that for peace of mind, happiness, and extremely successful business. That is what Callan has done is attempting to refine and she's coaching about it. This is a crazy podcast. It was really fun to shoot. We talk about how to use AI tactically in your land business, why you should be getting into value add land plays yesterday how to design your life so you have more free time using automation, all kinds of book recommendations, mindset stuff. This is a fantastic journey through the mind of an absolute legend of land here. So let's get into it. Callan Faulkner. Callan, welcome to the Legends of Land podcast. So kicking it off here, just what draws you towards automation? Is it your love of tech, building business systems, or the lifestyle around it? First of all, thanks for having me, Brandon. I am honored. So excited. Your name makes me feel special. So um, I feel oh. like I am a legend coming oh, okay. in. Okay. I which... thought you meant Brandon. That's a unique Brandon, angle. <laughs> the name just speaks to me. <laughs> I was like, this is no, awesome. The name of the podcast. <laughs> the name of the podcast is it's awesome. Cool. Yes. So automation, honestly, all that stuff, like systems and tech, it's fine, but it's really what it's creating. It's creating space. It's creating more energy. It's creating more time. If I'm able to build an automation, whether that's using AI to help me plan my meal plan for the week or build a zap that takes information from one place to another, someone had to do that. So either a VA was doing it, I was doing it, a person was doing it. Now, no one has to do it. Now it's just happening. And the whole idea behind automation for me is I am just obsessed with efficiency. I'm obsessed with living my perfect day every day. That absolutely does not happen, but that is the goal is to end my day by three, be outside, hit nature, hit my workout, see friends, cook, be with the dogs. And so automation allows me to do all that stuff, which is why I love it. So it's all about just the lifestyle. You're like chunking out these extra pieces of time, becoming more efficient. hundred percent. I think we all start businesses to get A lot of us started in a W-2 and we were like, I don't want to be chained to a desk. So we start a business and then guess what? You're even more chained to your desk and your phone. That's my life's mission is to help entrepreneurs really be able to live the life they want to live while also making a boatload of money. And almost all land investors are entrepreneurs, like the most savage type of entrepreneur. Yeah, I come across these people and they're like, okay, there's just this piece of dirt, literally a piece of dirt. And there's thousand ways that I can make money off it. And so it's almost like natural filter for just the mindset you're talking about. You have to, you're scrappy. Mm -hmm. And a lot of time, most land investors didn't grow up wanting to be a land investor. Yeah, exactly. Almost every single land investor I've met was in another career that they really did not like. They were not feeling energized and they wanted something else. So they're in this new thing And there's even more of a sense of pressure of, I don't want it to be like the other thing. I don't want it to be like my last job. And now they're here and they are scrappy as heck. They're so resourceful. They are willing to do anything it takes because they know the consequence is not that having a nine to five is bad. And and I think a lot of people should, especially if you're doing only bigger deals in the beginning. But in a lot of cases, they're doing jobs that aren't a good fit for them. And they're just not wanting to go back there. So that's why I'm trying to step in and say, let's never go back there. Let's stay where we are. What would be your, if you were just going to say, hey, do this one thing with AI or automations, it's going to save you so much time so you can go walk your dog. What would, what's the top thing? A hundred percent right now, AI, right now, because I don't care if you are a dentist, if you are the guy that mows my lawn, I was just chatting with him. He needs to start using it. When I say AI, what I mean is you should be using a tool like ChatGPT. I think we've all heard of ChatGPT. ChatGPT is what's called a large language model, and there are a bunch of large language models. My favorite large language model is called Claude. You'll probably hear me say Claude 
Another one is called Perplexity. Perplexity is incredible for real-time research. I believe that every single person listening to this podcast should have the paid version, $20 a month, of either ChatGPT or Claude, and they should be logging in every single day to that tool and talking to it. You mentioned two things, just to open people's minds a little bit. You mentioned meal planning and you mentioned the lawn, the landscaping guy. Yeah. Where, where, where are you applying that? Yeah. So let's talk just like functional use cases. I'm just to show people how effective it can be and then give a couple yeah. examples of the best place you use it in land. Yeah. So let's start with just personal life because I, I like to ground us in, we're all humans. We're all running families, homes, all these things. So let's talk about use cases in our personal life. So on Tuesday, I had my dad and my neighbors over. My neighbors are Chuck and Darlene. They're 70 years old. And we did AI for beginners. So let's talk about some of the use cases for them. The first use case that we did is so an LLM AI, chat GPT, kind of all, I'm going to be a little synonymous. The goal of an LLM, the purpose of an LLM is that this product, this technology thinks, strategizes, and makes decisions like a human being. And it responds to you in text format. So if you're thinking functionally about this, Having access to ChatGPT or having access to something like Claude is basically like having access to the smartest person in the world in any subject that you want to have access to. But it's like a 10-year-old right now. So when you're talking to it, you have to talk like a 10-year-old. So as I'm going through some of these examples, you'll see I'm very clear about what I want. Do you have kids, Brandon? I don't. Okay, so you probably know someone that has a 10-year-old or you've met a Some nephews that I love. So yeah. if you told your niece or nephew to go clean their room and they were 10 years old, they may clean their room. They might just put a sock in a drawer. Everything under the bed. Just shove it all, <laughs> put it yeah. in a bag, put it in the closet. Exactly. Yeah. You have to be very clear with them. You have to fold your clothes. We have to make the bed fully, put all the pillows on the bed. We need, I need you to take the vacuum. I need you to Swiffer. And then I need you to wipe down all your countertops. Okay. Very specific. So as we're talking to AI, you're going to hear me be very detailed. And that's because it's a 10 year old savant. It's the smartest person you've ever spoken to, but it's 10 years old. So let's go through the example of it's five o'clock. And I'm not sure if this has ever happened to you. It happens to me all the time. It's five o'clock. We need to make dinner. We open the fridge and you have chicken, bell peppers, asparagus, you got some Parmesan cheese, you've got the normal stuff that's in your fridge, milk, Apatio, egg, hot sauce, cheese, some of the cool ingredients, a pantry full of stuff, perfect moment. So we would go into ChatGPT and we would say something like this. So the first thing we would say is we would try to identify who this person is that we're talking to. So I would say you are a world-class chef. That's the role. Second thing is we have to give it some context, the situation. It loves details. I say this to land investors all the time. Tell it about your deal. Tell it about what's going on. Where are you? Who are you? It loves details. So I'm making dinner for me and my wife. There's two of us and I don't know what to make. I need you to build a recipe for me using these ingredients. So the list the ingredients that you have. You can just be broad. We have stuff in the fridge. We have some stuff in the pantry, but the main ingredients are chicken, asparagus, bell peppers, Parmesan cheese. So again, you need to talk like if you were talking to a world-class chef, what would you say? For me, I'd say I like it to be gluten-free. I want it to be savory. I want it to take less than an hour to cook. I don't want to use my grill. I only want to use the stove or the oven. It's two o'clock, so I'm happy to marinate something if it needs to be marinated. So you need to give it some time constraints, some any sort of constraints. And then again, at the very end, request, tell it its role. Give it the request, give it the context and the information. Then there's the objective, which is, or the structure that you wanted to give it back to you. In this particular example, I don't need it to give me a particular structure. I mean, I would say, can you please give me exact details for the recipe of how to make all this? You can always ask it for that later. We're just trying to get the best answer on the first try. That's why we're trying to give it more details. The last thing, most important thing, please ask any clarifying questions that you need to build me the best recipe in the world. Please ask any clarifying questions. It will give you an exact step-by-step -step recipe and it'll probably ask you a couple questions that you forgot. What kind of spice level do you like? I know it asked me a couple questions um, on Tuesday night. I'm happy to go down some more personal examples, but that's a very basic one that I think every single person could use in their daily life. And are you using ChatGTP more than Google at this point? Perplexity. So perplexity is uh, perplexity.ai is I literally don't Google. The other day I like accidentally Googled out of habit. I'm like, oh my God, these results are 
terrible. Perplexity is actively searching the internet and it's doing 10 to 12 Google searches for you. And then it's pulling back the, it's not just giving you a result. It's literally explaining to you. So land investor example this morning, talking to my partner, Rick, we're talking about a subdivide deal in Colorado. We had lost the deal. So we were bidding with another buyer. The buyer came in, they had a 60 day due diligence period. And we're like, no, there's so much to do. Surveyors are months out, not going to happen. The buyer pulled out. So the seller reached back out to us and was like, Hey, you guys were second in line. Do you want to the deal now. And of course, we're like, not what happened in their due diligence process. <laughs> what the heck? I went down. Yeah, why? So the immediate thought, I was like, why don't you go back to Tyler, our broker, and ask, is can we get more details? And he's in Texas. We can get everything. I'm like, well, what's the law in Colorado? Go to perplexity. I'm like, let's ask perplexity. Go to perplexity. Give it the situation. Here's the situation. We were the buyer. We got outbid. The buyer came through. The due diligence hypothetically failed. We're not exactly sure what's going on. Perplexity told us this Colorado state law is that the seller does not have to disclose anything that happened, that the, the buyer doesn't have to talk about their due diligence. They don't have to talk about why they pulled out. And that would have been a back and forth another couple of days, right? You go back to the realtor, you ask about the law, they come back. We just saved a couple of days. Now we're actually putting an offer in tonight on the property. So really cool. Wonderful. That's a great use case. So there's Claude Perplexity Chat GDP. I haven't been using Perplexity. So you just upped my game. I use chat GTP and Claude and anytime for some reason I have to go to Google, I'm kind of disappointed. Now I know why perplexity is my key. Yes. Perplexity is the most real time research. And the cool thing about perplexity is every time it gives you a response, it gives you the source. Nice. That is not the case with chat GPT. So when you're lo looking at legal stuff, zoning stuff, like I am in there constantly for future, give me the comprehensive plan. Give me the zoning site. Give me the GIS. It's giving you the source for everything. ChatGPT. I'm like, I don't know where this came from. It sounds right. I hope it's right, <laughs> but I don't yeah, know exactly. It could be hallucinating. Where it's from. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So, what would you say the key difference between Claude and ChatGPT are? Really good question. So, ChatGPT was kind of the first to market, and I think it kind of just became like the Google. It's really great for just basic things. I build prompts in there. I'll ask it most things. It has real-time access to the internet. So you can say, tell me about zoning in blank area, but it doesn't give you a source. So I don't trust that. It's great if you give it a PDF, it can digest it. Have you heard of custom GPTs? Are you familiar with that inside of ChatGPT? Okay. Mm -hmm. So there is a, a cool thing inside of ChatGPT and Claude kind of has it too, whereas there's a custom GPT. So with a custom GPT, you can create... So for my clients, I have an AI course going on right now. We're building out, most of them have a land or a, an MLS listing GPT. So we train that GPT with a prompt on this is how we build a land.com listing. This is how we build a listing for MLS. We are land investors. This is specific for land. This is the first part. This is the second part. This is the third part. Here's what the listing should look like. It should be SEO friendly because land.com is essentially all SEO, very important. We train that GPT on how to build a land listing. What's nice about it is if your VA is using it, they don't have to build a prompt. They don't have to really talk to it. All they have to do is just go in that GPT and say, I'm ready to build a listing. The GPT will start asking questions. What's the APN? What's the lot size? Tell me about the, the land. What are the key features of it? And then it will write you your listing in the tone that you specified. Chat GPT, those GPTs can be shared outside of your organization. If I'm working with a client, it really is nice to have a custom GPT I can share with a client. Now, Claude is the number one LLM on the market right now. Three of these are gone. Yeah. Whiz bang <laughs> thing. I have no idea. Claude I is both, everything. Yeah. Claude is incredible. It does not have real time internet access. So you cannot say what happened in the Minnesota Timberwolves game last week. It's going to be like, I have no idea. It has access, I think October 2023 was the last moment of internet that it had. The content coming out of Claude, I don't want to say 10 times better than ChatGPT, but definitely five times better than ChatGPT. I can tell from a mile away if you wrote your land listing. With ChatGPT, I should say, without specifying the tone and working with it a little bit, if you just raw went in there and said, build me a land listing, I can tell from a mile away it was built with ChatGPT because it probably says the word tranquil and it probably says the word bespoke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when you say much better content, we're talking about 
kind of copywriting type of things. And so you're giving it prompts, maybe more in a creative writing atmosphere or PDFs. What are you using it for specifically? Even emails. Oh my God. Wait, what am I, let, me go to, let me go to my chats. So it's custom GPTs are like building kind of a widget that's trained to do a specific task. In Claude, it's called a Claude project. Those are the same exact thing. They're just competitors with each other. I love Claude projects, but I can't share it with anyone outside of my organization, but that's fine. Oh. Most of the stuff I'm doing is just internal, but I cannot share it with clients. So if I was like, Brandon, I built this insane Claude project. It is trained on EOS, entrepreneurial operating system. It knows traction. It can help you with your business. No, I can't share it with you. It's only internal for me right now. Uh, okay. So that's kind of the pro and con. So one of my favorite, I don't, are you familiar with EOS? Have you heard that before? I am. Okay. So some of you, if you haven't heard that before, there's a book called Traction by Gino Wickman, top 10 business books for sure. So my organization is implementing his program called Entrepreneurial Operating System. And he has a whole slew of resources and just like the exact formula for running a business. What should your leadership meeting be? How should you track your scorecard? What should your KPIs be? How should you manage your team? Like it's all decided. Everything's decided. And in a world and in a situation where I am constantly coming up with stuff and being creative, it just feels really nice to be told. <laughs> it's like bumper rails when you're bowling. It's yes. like, it's going to get to the right place. Yeah. I seriously have gotten like <laughs> emotional in my meetings with my EOS coach. I'm like, this is so crazy. It's probably how my clients feel. Like yeah. you're, I'm just being so taken care of. Anyways, I built a cloud project. I'm just going to talk through this. In the cloud project, I have my org chart, my mission, my vision, my core values, the history of the business, where we're going, all of our goals. I have our finances in here. So I pulled down P&Ls. I pulled down uh, balance sheets. And then I've answered a series of about 20 questions that I asked it to ask me. So what inspires you to start the business? Can you describe the business model? Who's the ideal client? What's the leadership style? What's the current structure? So again, I'm asking AI, how do I make this the best? The goal is that I have a business coach. I want to come in here and talk to this thing. And it knows exactly who I am, where I was, where I'm going, what my tendencies are. I even have my human design loaded in here. If you don't know what human design is, it's an unbelievable ability to understand the way somebody works. I have my Enneagram, all of my team's Enneagrams, personality testing. So it knows everything about my business. In addition to that, I have uploaded the PDF version of the book Traction. So that entire book is in this knowledge base. And then there's something called custom instruction. So the custom instruction is that you are a world-class entrepreneurial operating system coach embodying the expertise of an EOS integrator. They're called integrators, these business coaches. Your objective is to provide guidance and support on any topic or task from the entrepreneurial operating system wheel, which is their system. For each request, the user will specify the topic or task. You need to respond with tailored guidance and support matching the requested level of detail. And I said, when you give me responses, please use headers, numbers, and bullet points. I just visually like to see things broken out instead of just like these long paragraphs of content. So I come in here and I start talking about a situation with an employee or a situation with our, we're changing some of our offers right now. We're building out a new community. It knows what I have. It knows where I'm going. It knows my numbers. It's unbelievable. Like I am so giddy about it. <laughs> it's, it's really exciting. Yeah. Okay. So that kind of puts the custom GTP and chat GTP to shame. That's really powerful. You can technically do this. So full GPT. PDF of the book too? GPT, okay. act, custom GPTs actually can take more data than a cloud project. You just don't like uh, the outputs. I just don't like the, yeah, you mentioned content, like even just the way it talks to me in cloud, yeah. I like even reading it through. So I did the exact same thing but I made it my therapist <laughs> and oh, nice. I put in my whole life story. I had to give me like 30 questions I needed to answer. So I recorded myself in loom mm -hmm. answering all those questions. And I took the transcript from that loom and I put it as the knowledge base in here. That's yeah. Really good idea. Can you interact with a, a cloud project oh, yep. with project. voice communication? Can you talk back and forth with question? You cannot now. Okay. I know it's coming. But right now you can't, it's all typing. That is something that ChatGPT does have over Claude is I could come in and have a voice conversation with it. Okay. Talk to me about going on a walk with Sunny and then having a conversation with your ChatGTP, like real time, just like, 
Have you? How did you that? know my dog's name is Sunny? <laughs> Are you dog. serious? What? You just guessed no. that? Okay. I, I'm, I'm intuitive. You're intuitive. Dang, Brandon. I was like, okay, this is crazy. We should probably like start talking about my dead ancestors, not <laughs> land. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's talk about an example. I was on a walk last week. I have this like half mile loop in my neighborhood. It's all wooded, so the dogs are off leash. And I am just chilling with my GPT open and I'm saying I am struggling with this and this. I actually, what I was doing is I'm, I really am redoing my, the structure of my community, ongoing community right now for my clients. And I told it to be Alex Harmozy. Oh, good call. And I told it exactly what I'm doing, exactly what I have, my frustrations with what I have. Uh, I told it my human design and I was like, please ask me questions one by one one by one is important or else they'll mm -hmm. just ask you 16 questions. And by the end of it, we had a, pr a pretty solid idea of what the future program was going to look like. And it took about 45 minutes. Have you done it before? Have you done the? Oh, for walk? sure. Have you yeah. ever gotten like a little bit frustrated with it? Like, hey, stop asking me questions one at a time. Stop every once oh. in a while. Start like rambling. That's funny you say that because it actually performs really well when you tell it that you're frustrated with it mm -hmm. because its goal is to make you happy. So if you say, hey, you know what? I'm really frustrated with you right now. I told you I'm stressed out and you continue to ask me multiple questions. Please do not ask me more than one question at a time. And it'll say, oh my gosh, I'm so it's sorry. Though, yeah. Land, yeah, I totally understand. I love the uh, idea of using it as a therapist. That's like clutch because when it like, calms me down sometimes, like, hey, knock it off. Like you're asking me so many and that's, oh, sorry. <laughs> Remember what happened to you when you were 21? You're probably being triggered by that oh, event wow. right now i'm like holy smokes that's fantastic tips okay so yeah the whole talking to it i think that part of that also is just being able to just vocalize something and even if it's just a sounding 100%. board like sometimes it'll have 100%. good input and sometimes it's oh i'm actually talking through something and that helps for sure i try to shut it down by four or so but i got uh redwood forest near here and i get out in the forest nice. and uh, for sure like the well, ultimate just like i'm getting in nature slash turning into a cyborg <laughs> at the same time it's so funny it's so counterintuitive but i could not agree more that just sometimes i and i'm very there's so much going on in my life right now just between different businesses and there's i need to get my health different health insurance like I just went through a divorce so like, there's all this stuff happening and it's i sometimes i just get into it and i'm like these are the, I just need to talk. I just need to tell you like all these things that are on my mind. I need to deal with the health insurance. I need to call that seller back. I need to uh, sign that purchase agreement. Bup, 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 bup. I just need you to listen and help me prioritize everything. Ask me questions one by one that are going to help me get a full to-do list baked out based on urgency and priority. Yeah, and that's fantastic. Most <laughs> of the time I'd call a friend. They're like, shut up. I do not want to hear this. Um, you were mentioning like a lot of things like you I think this probably happens for a lot of entrepreneurs. You get a bunch of thoughts in your head, like all these things that need to happen and trying to prioritize them. How do you tactically deal with yeah. 15 things that have to happen a day and prioritizing those? Yeah. The cheat code is having an executive assistant. Yeah. That is like the ultimate, right? I mean, that there's really no other way. I know a lot of us are visionaries. A lot of us probably have a little ADHD vibes happening. If you're that creative, very focused like we have big dreams we got the big goals we're thinking about 10 years from now there's got to be some cons which cons is just these dotting i's and crossing t's mm, take it or leave it i can do it it just takes a lot of energy for me to do it so i have an executive assistant i follow dan martell's program to the t so if you don't know dan martell he wrote a book called buy back your time another top 10 book that I would recommend reading. He, I think it's chapter eight. He outlines what your executive assistant should do for you. And this person can be in South America. There's wonderful executive assistants. Like they can be anywhere in the world. It doesn't matter. But having someone 15, 20 hours a week that is going through your email, first touch on all your emails. I, right now, if I, something comes to my mind, I literally just slack my assistant. I'm like, Hey, this, I need it. She knows she's, I'm just going to add to the list. We talk almost every day and I know that it's just never going to get lost in the seat. If you don't have, you're not in a place where you can get an executive assistant, which I 
honestly think it's one of the first two hires that a founder should make because they, the EA can take the tasks that don't give you energy and the tasks that don't allow you to make money are the tasks that you need to get off of your plate immediately. So in land, of course, qualifying the seller lead, that may not give you energy, but it might actually be the data part that doesn't give you energy. So I always talk to people about hiring of make sure you're delegating the stuff that doesn't give you energy first. And then the second way is really you got to build a system. You have to, if that is a, a note in your iPhone, I don't really care. In my world, I have two notebooks. I have a notebook for meetings. I have a notebook that's a journal. At the end of the week, on a Sunday afternoon, if you have kids, it's probably a Monday morning. Go back in your notebook. What are all the random things? What are the things you wrote in notes? What are the things that were in Slack? And now you're bringing them into the, the digital system. I don't think it's realistic that you're going to be perfectly putting your tasks exactly where they need to go all week long. But at some point during the week, it needs to be put. For me, I manage all my tasks in Notion. That is the task manager we use. You can use anything, as long as it's something you're actually going to use on a regular basis. I'm a Notion power user. I love Let's Notion. Go. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. I love it. I think that the idea, the concept of capturing these ideas or things as quickly and easily as possible, I think is important, whether that be just an Apple notes or totally. for me, it's a, for me, it's a notion. So at the end of the day, you can go in and see, okay, here's 15 things. They all have to get processed different ways, but at least all my thoughts have been captured because I'm a crazy person. I got a hot tip for you, Brandon, about okay. to change your life. All okay. right. So there's an app called audio AI, literally audio pen.ai you just press record here's all the things that happened today i talked to brad i need to follow up with him i need to send an loi for the subdivide opportunity in delta i need to pull the new list for hernando county i need to email planning and zoning i need to prep for my new va starting next week now you get your little transcript back today's tasks mm -hmm. and just copy it and put it wherever you want it to go. Drop that in Slack and then your EA makes sure it all happens. Take care of my life. <laughs> That's awesome. I think that the EA being the first hire is a good call for a couple of reasons, but I think that there's a leap that entrepreneurs need to take learning how to delegate and manage people. Couldn't and that first executive assistant is just, it's a gap that's hard to bridge. And it's just about taking that first step because every day you're learning something new and eventually you can grow into running teams, but not taking that first leap. It's a hard leap. It is so hard. And if you're sitting there like no one is ever going to do it as great as me. And what if they mess up and I would never give someone my bank account information and there, ugh, there's going to be mistakes. There <laughs> will be mistakes, yeah. but you have no other option. You literally do not. It is just, you're just prolonging the pain. And I'm, trust me, I have been there and there are things still that I have a serious issue letting go of. And guess what? That's going to be my biggest challenge to scaling to 10 million mm -hmm. is me letting go of the belief that no one can do this as good as me. That is not effing true. I am not, you think I'm the best AI trainer in the world? My job is to go find them find the best people in the world. And maybe for you as a land investor, you need to find the best surveyor in the world, find the best engineer, not in the world, in that county, <laughs> in that area, find the best surveyor, find the best engineer, find the best broker, take them to lunch, buy them a digital lunch. I don't care. Make them your people for right now. And obviously EA is, EA is a little bit different. But yeah, if it's just going to be, it's going to lead to burnout, especially because that EA is going to take things that you don't like doing. And you can't continue. There's no amount of money. Once mm -hmm. you start making money, mm -mm, nope, nope, I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> yeah, I've had a virtual assistant EA for a long time. And now it's, I need a real life EA. I need someone at my house because I don't want to open mail anymore. These, these things that I realize yeah. I hate doing and I actually yeah. don't have to. Dan Martell talks about this all the time, but he's like, what are you worth hourly? Mm -hmm. So if you make... $100,000 a year, it comes out to 62. If you make $100,000 a year, you are about 60 bucks an hour. So his rule of thumb is whatever your hourly rate is, 
-hmm. If you're going to outsource it, divide it by four. I think he does. Okay. So if you're worth 60 bucks an hour right now, you're making hundred K a year, you can pay someone 15 bucks an hour. That's okay. your marker. 200 K a year. Now you're about bumped to 30 bucks an hour. Have you heard of the concept of a house manager? Are you no. familiar with that? I mean, it sounds, I could probably figure <laughs> that out. <laughs> what are you about? Those two words uh, make sense to me. In Dan's, well, actually a couple of years ago, I reached out to Dan on Instagram and he wakes up in the morning. He wakes up at five, he reads, he plays with the kids, he works out, he walks the dog. I'm like, who is emptying the dishwasher? Who mm -hmm. is prepping dinner? Who is doing the laundry? Morning, granted you're making $20 million a year. So I know there's probably someone he's literally, I've had a house manager for the last, I don't know how many years he's had a house manager, but this is the person that you're also delegating all your house activities, laundry, the stuff that you fight with your partner about. I mean, if you're making over 150 K a year, kind of bleeding to that 200 K profit, I, I think you should have a house manager. Like it is kind of at my point, non-negotiable. I hired mine two years ago and she comes to the house four days a week. She makes me breakfast. She preps my lunch. She's prepping dinner. I have girls night every Monday. I have like 10 friends that come over. I cannot do what I'm doing and cook a dinner for 10 people and prep the house, make it nice, get the candles going. Like, absolutely not. I don't have time for that. But she is allowing me to, again, live my perfect day every day. She's allowing me to do that because of the stuff I'm delegating to her. That's so cool. So that fits into your concept of why you're doing this, why automation systems delegation is so important because it enables you to build this lifestyle, which as an entrepreneur, like that's the whole point. Yeah. Exactly. What's fun. Fun for me is dinner with the girls. I freaking love it. We have so much fun and hmm. I have, you know, 25 friends that live within 10 miles of me. And so we do a little bit of a rotation and different girls come in and we get to meet different people. It's whatever your version of fun is. What's what do you like to do for fun, Brandon? What's what lights Brandon up? I mountain bike and a little bit of running, exercise, outdoor Amazing. stuff, hiking, Love camping, it. fishing, hunting, that Sweet. type of thing. So taking yep. the time, making sure you yeah. have hunting trips on the books, making sure things are taken care of at home, you got your fishing trips, you got your boys' trips, yep. your mountain biking come multiple times during the week. You gotta have systems. You gotta have great systems and great people. If you also want to hit those income goals. Yeah, exactly. And I just got my first housekeeper. And so I'm now I'm okay. like intrigued. I need to upgrade though. That's like my, to, that's like mm -hmm. going from virtual, like executive assistant to chief of staff. I need to, yes. need, <laughs> I need yeah. to upgrade. We're out. Let's see how they do. And uh, maybe they could get upgraded to laundry. Yeah. We don't know. I'll ping you when I have a house manager. Cause that's next level. I love that idea. No, and it's not. She's on payroll with my company. She probably comes in around most months, anywhere from 1200 bucks oh. to 1500 bucks a month. She comes 12 hours a week for me. Mm -hmm. You may need more if you're you got a big family or big home or whatever, but it's not like crazy outside of what we pay for stuff. Like we, how much is launch control? <laughs> like yeah, for you know, sure. it's, <clears throat> uh, it's all kind of relative. More a conceptual thing. It's almost like a mind thing where it's you just don't realize how like possible it is. Like 1500 bucks a month pushing it and you can just have all that time back. It's kind of a no brainer, especially when you look at it, like it's a business expense. Like you're putting them, put it through the company. This person is legitimately an assistant making your company more effective. It makes a ton of sense. It's unbelievable. You, you guys, like I come home from a trip, I put my suitcase in my room and the next morning, it, everything's put away. I am not lazy. Look, I will show you what I'm doing. I am building some amazing things. I would rather spend my time building my stuff and talking to you and talking to Dan Martell, helping him with AI, yeah. emptying my suitcase. I'll do it. I'll do it. But I'd rather not. You're not pumped, though. Unless you put on like queen or something. And you just like, sure. okay, then maybe you're pumped <laughs> about putting the laundry away. Uh, these everyone's like, this is such an entitled girl i'm like no it's not that's the cycle that's the psychological even for me look at that that's a trauma response that's me being like i'm not entitled yeah. no i'm not i can well, have people help me in my life the legend of the land podcast listeners are just savage entrepreneurs and they get it i don't think anyone for is sure. going to look at anyone in land and be like they're probably lazy people are maniacs oh, right. <laughs> i love this crew yeah, for sure. You also have a mentor, Taylor Welch, who's kind of a 
business coach, but he's like business second kind of after lifestyles. I have a lot of play yeah. into how you've designed all this. Oh my God. Yeah. He's incredible. If you don't follow him, he is Taylor A. Welsh on Instagram. It's W-E-L-C-H. He, he has a mastermind group that coaches businesses on ultimately going from seven to eight figures. He's gone to 10 figures and he lost it all. And, and then he regrew a uh, business to eight figures. So he really has this incredible background and knowledge of he grew to 10 figures, but his kids didn't really know who he was and didn't want to spend time with him because he just focused so much on this thing. So he's really an amazing coach and teacher, but he coaches from a place of slow and steady, build the foundation. And I think when we start to get into this place, especially as land investors, I don't know if, so, if someone on here has done a deal that made 50K or 100K on one deal. It's almost like this animalistic obsession that we get with, oh, well, I just, now I just need to, if I just do 20 of those a year, now it's 2 million. It doesn't, it, we can't snap our fingers and have anything like that happen. It is a slow roll, especially if we want to build something long lasting. So he's been a massive influence on me and my company. How do you deal with that kind of intense drive versus being able to settle down? I mean, you're turning off your computer at three, I think you said, like, how do you turn your brain off? Meditation, breath work, sauna, working out, sunshine, nature. I'm a massive fan of Joe Dispenza. If you have not heard him before, he is kind of bleeding the edge of science and spirituality and his meditations have 100 percent changed my life when i was going through the divorce last year i was with uh, my wife for 12 years it's my only relationship i've ever been in and it was like not only losing obviously you're losing her but it's like everything i've ever known and i also have an anxious attachment so fear of being alone all of that i was so living in the past so focused on the past and obviously I'm so hungry for the future in business, but personal life, I was living in the past and he, his meditations, he has a walking meditation, I think is really awesome. If you're just getting into meditation, you're like, there's no way I could just sit down for 15 minutes and not do anything before working on his stuff. I also hired a spiritual coach and he helped me tremendously. We can talk about some of the things that um, really changed my life in that journey. But Joe Dispenza's work is absolutely phenomenal. He has a new documentary called The Source. I'll find it. Maybe we can put it in the show notes. Um, talking about how meditation physically changes your body, physically changes the things in your bloodstream. So really being able to slow down, get into the silence was painful, so painful. Because my brain, and I think all of our brains are just constantly going, but you really, and I've really been trying to make this a daily practice is even if it's five minutes, shut it down, walking without headphones, just really trying to not have any inputs because there was a time in my life that I was completely addicted to inputs. I like couldn't even go into Target without having a podcast on. Like I just needed something. I'm sure a lot of people can relate just because we have our phones with us constantly. It's frustrating. Definitely. So it sounds like you go on walks without inputs. When you go to sleep at night, you have put a podcast or music on? Or Absolutely. So when I go to sleep at night, there's times when I get into scroll kingdom and then I'm like, oh my God, so what's that? But most nights I have a YouTube video. It's called visualization sleep meditation. And this is a hot tip. So I download it to my phone. The, the, it's about a nine hour YouTube video. And she walks you through kind of a really nice meditation. You do some breath work and there's a bunch of these. You can look up sleep meditation, but this is the hot tip on your phone. This is iPhone I have an iPhone. I have the timer app on my phone. You can set the timer on your phone. And then there's a button that says when timer ends. If you scroll all the way down, it says stop playing. So you hit stop playing and then you can set your timer for 20 minutes. And then when it hits the timer, it stops playing anything that's playing on your phone. So yeah. that is what I've been doing recently. And it is so awesome because right before you fall asleep, you're in brainwave called theta. And that is when you can access your subconscious. And that's where 95% of your beliefs come from, your subconscious beliefs, because you're in theta from zero to seven. It's very imagination. You're 
not conscious, but you kind of understand you're still awake, but not really. And so that's why doing some sort of meditation or visualization during that period is so powerful. I think that it was possibly Thomas Edison, maybe Einstein would hold a, like a metal ball. They'd sit in their chair and they would take a nap and then they'd have a tin plate under them. And when they'd mm. fall asleep all the way, it would, they'd drop it on and they'd wake up. But when they were trying to program themselves to operate in that theta yes. state that you're talking about to find ideas. That's um, so good, Brandon. And even in my community, we actually have been, I just did a talk two weeks ago to my group about quantum productivity and flow state. And so we're all trying to get under 60 phone pickups a day because it's wild how many yeah. times you pick up your phone. It's scary. But even going for a walk with no headphones, the first 15, 20 are annoying because you're like, Ugh, I have a whole hour ahead of me. Like I want to listen to this podcast and you're thinking about everything that's just happened. And then suddenly 30 minutes in or even in a meditation, the downloads start coming and I have no other word for it besides a download. Mm -hmm. And I call it source universe, God, whatever you call it. But if you can start tapping into that part and I've even my meditations, I cannot do them laying down on a bed because I will fall asleep. So I am either laying down on a hard ground with a pillow or sitting up is what Joe really wants you to do. I can, I struggle sitting up. It's so hard for me, but baby steps. Um, can you talk about the walking meditation, what that yeah. is specifically? Yeah. So if you're interested in it, you can just literally Google walking meditation, Joe Dispenza. I would buy it from his website. It's drjoedispenza.com. And if you go to shop and then meditations, you can just search for walking and it'll pop up. My favorite one is called, I just do walking meditation one. It's stepping into your future. So the whole idea is that you start with a little bit of breathing. It's about 75 minutes. And then you are, first of all, all the music is like frequency, perfect. Yeah, I think it's, I don't know what frequency it tunes at, but the idea is you're walking and he kind of cues you, like cueing your breath. He cues your thoughts. You're doing a lot of visualization of the future. That is the walking meditation is really what completely changed my healing journey and the divorce because I was so focused on the past and I'll never find love like this again. That was it. That's all I have. And the moment it was like, what do you want? Why don't you just create it in your mind? If you could just play the story out, how would the story play out? And this is the whole idea of quantum. If you guys haven't gone down the quantum path, this is a pretty unbelievable. It's, like, it's just the idea that you essentially have the ability to create your reality. This is a little woo. And it's not just going to come to you, but in the walking meditation, the first step of creating your own reality is knowing exactly what you desire, what is coming for you. If you can say, this is the car I'm driving. This is the house. This is the color of the kitchen. This is what we do. This is a day in the life. This is like imagining the perfect day five years from now, the money in your bank account, visualizing all of it, and then truly believing you already have it. And that's the journey that I've gone on now. I am not really dating yet. I'm kind of in that place now, like I'm ready to, but I already know my next partner's coming. I already know I'm going to get married again. I know I'm having kids. I just know that. There's no doubt about that. I know the same thing with my companies. I know we're going to have our days where we are really, it's really hard, but I know success is coming. It's already come. I've already seen little hints and pieces of it. So when you truly believe it at your core, that's this again, back to the walking meditation. That's what he's having you do this first step of walk into your future. What do you want it to be? Cool. This is what you want. Now you already have it. So just act like that. And then that's where this joy, excitement comes from, which is cool. What do you think it is that makes that work? Yeah, I think it works because if you live in a place of lack or you live in the place of I want and oh, if I just get a girlfriend, if I just get married again, I'll be happy. A lot of people listening to this have done a deal where they've made 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 or a month where they've made 50,000 or 30, you've made 25,000. And there was a time in your life where you said, if I can just make $10,000, the world will be right. I won't have anxiety. I won't be sad. <laughs> I won't be upset about anything. It'll all be great. Guess what? And I'm sure you can say this too, as someone that's made a lot of money, even the people I have in my life that have the perfect relationship, the perfect kids, the perfect home, millions of dollars, 
and they still are sad and they still are having anxiety. When you operate from a place of want, if I just get this, then I'll be there. You're always wanting and you're always desiring and you're not feeling excitement, joyful, gratitude, present moment right now. If you can flip it from, I'm not wanting, I already know I have it. So now I'm calm. And if I'm calm, now I can take action. Now I can go have that conversation with the girl at the bar. I'm like, I I know this is coming for me. This is a big concept of visualization, meditation, and manifesting. Ultimately is manifesting. But the definition of manifesting is making it happen. Nothing just comes. You have to make it happen. But you can't make it happen if you're not in the right. Okay. So it sounds like it's kind of a function of getting your mind so that you can operate effectively, make quality decisions and move forward type of thing. Get your body right. Get your mind right. Get your, get that emotional. That's emotional regulation is a huge part of a lot of things I talk about, like moving through emotions, like feeling things, like feel it, have the anxiety, and then we move forward. We move through it. It's the only way to go is through it. So if you can change your brain, you can change your thoughts You can rewire your brain every time you have a thought about something. Like, let's just talk about a land deal. Let's just put this into a land perspective because we might be losing you. I have a massive deal I'm working on right now. There's a million dollars of profit on the line. It's a rezone from agricultural to multifamily. It's in the Tampa area, 13 acres. It was four separate properties. We did a reverse subdivide, made it one. We did the rezone. We have all four properties under contract. In my purchase agreement, it says we're contingent on the construction drawings being approved. That will go for that. That's when we will purchase the property. And I'm doing that because I have a buyer. I have a senior living or a 55 plus community. They're coming in. They're buying the property. They're going through the entitlement process right now. We've put about $100,000 into the property, into due diligence, engineering work, all the stuff. The sellers, we've been working with these sellers for 18 months. We have closed on one of the properties for $395,000. here is the problem. They are not doing well financially. They are asking me, I get a text or a call every three days. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Where are we? Where are we? Guess what? I'm a people pleaser. One of my negatives. I am deeply affected by other people's emotions. I can feel them deeply. So my thoughts are, oh my God, what if this doesn't go through? Oh my God, what if this doesn't go through? Okay, so that's my thought. That's creating anxiety. That's creating cortisol. That is creating a physical hormonal secretion in my body. Cortisol creates inflammation. Inflammation creates disease. So that entire cycle right there, thought, emotion, hormone, is how some disease is created, these negative thoughts versus what I've been doing a lot of work on is meditating on this, visualizing this, visualizing. I think the power in where I'm at right now is I have done so much work that I don't care if this deal doesn't go through. If this deal doesn't go through, I've played out every scenario. I will call the 55 plus community. I'll get them in touch with the seller. They'll work directly with them. Sellers are happy. They're going to get their deal done. And they have a great property. We've got the rezone done. It's value add. Their property is already worth more. Well, I learned a ton. I learned more than I could learn in any course doing this 18 month project. So now I have totally changed the situation. If it's, Hey, look, if you want to walk away, be my guest. Totally understand. Now I have my power. Now I have the power. If I am like pleading and no, now they have power. So this is a real life example of why emotional regulation, rewiring your brain, rewiring your thoughts, working through the emotion, feeling it. Oh, you feel anxious. Why? Let's talk through it. And a little bit of gratitude in there. It sounds like too, where you just realize like I've already done all this stuff. It would suck. Trust me. It would suck. (laughs) I'd have to say goodbye to a, a big payday. But I also believe that my business is going to be successful no matter what. I Mm -hmm. deeply believe that like with every part of me. And I've had to work through a lot of imposter syndrome, especially like being a female in this world, I'm like, do I know how to do this? I got It's making me a better leader, a better negotiator. Like it's really powerful stuff. I think that's, what's cool about the entrepreneurial journey is it's just like a real life 
journey. It's just oh. a battle with yourself to overcome all Every our day. Own demons and just, am I doing good enough? Will I ever do another deal? Yeah. Will I'll I ever maybe... do it? Am I ever going to be as successful as I want to be? Like, and mm. that's the whole thing. We don't talk about this. Every single day, there's this serious deep thought of like, will I ever get a deal as good as that one ever again? And mm. then that's the thing about thoughts. There's another book called The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. And he talks about how thoughts are like clouds. They just pass by and you are the viewer of the clouds and you get to decide what thought is real. Is that thought real? You're never going to do a deal like this again? No, that's not true. Anything's possible. You could do a 10X deal. If you don't believe that you'll ever do a deal like that again, I guarantee you, you will not ever do a deal like that again. Mindset's so huge. And so you talked about how people should just be using AI like yesterday. Use it in your land business right now. Do you think people should be hopping into value ads when they start right it's now? What's the deal with that? Yeah. So value ads, when we say value ads, I'll just kind of break down what I mean and what we mean. So everyone has probably heard the word entitlement. I'm going to do an entitlement deal. So what is an entitlement deal? The definition of an entitlement is getting the city or the county to approve a piece of paper, multiple papers, pack, stacks of papers that will change the land, change the property in some way. So an entitlement could be literally taking a 10 acre property and breaking it into two fives. That would be called a minor subdivision. It's an entitlement. It's also a value add. So a value add is like the parent word. I believe strongly that every land investor needs to understand the value add play. They don't need to be an expert but they need to be able to identify them. And I work with hundreds of land investors on lead generation. So I see their pipeline and literally every day I'm like, Jessica, did you see that 25 acre that your VA just said seller wants market? And they're like, yeah, look at around it. There's neighborhoods all around it. There's an airport about, I don't know, like a couple miles north. There is a highway, there's commercial, like this is a minor, this is a subdivide opportunity. And it's, oh, wow. Now what happens after that? If you're getting brand new into it, you're going to need to work with a coach, going to need to work with someone. I work with Rick Rao. He, R-A-U-C-H. When I'm doing subdivide, he's been doing it for 25 years. So it's amazing. He's, oh, by the way, this needs a culvert and a sidewalk and power in the back and 25 feet here. I'm like, that is not my skill set. I am, I can do it. But again, details, no. So when we're learning about this, number one is believing you can, because I do think it's very intimidating. I did not know what a deed was four years ago. No idea. Went through my first land investing course, learned what a deed was, learned the basics. And now I'm doing seven figure. Anyone listening to this can do it. You just have to find the right people to support you through the process. So the kind of call to action there for people is wrap your head around the different ways that you can add value and then yep. look for those. That's right. And it, in every market, it's different. So in some markets, cutting cutting a 20 into four fives, in some markets, that's the stupidest decision ever because everyone wants hunting property up there. No one wants a five acre property. In Tampa, it, 45 minutes outside of Tampa, hell yeah. Breaking that 20 into some twos, some threes, like absolutely people are looking for buildable homes. So number one is you have to know your market. You have to find a great broker that understands what the demand is. And then even brokers that are potentially multifamily brokers or commercial brokers, they can tell you like, oh my gosh, this area, we're killing it on mall. There's so much, we need more multifamily. We need more units. Okay, great. We, now that's in your mind. And that also is found in the county comprehensive plan. So understanding their future plan, where are they going? What do they need? Potentially booking a meeting with them to get some of this information. Hot tip, if you're going to go into a meeting with planning and zoning or with the county, just choose a random on-market property. Just pretend like you're going in there, going to talk about this. And then while you're in there, you can ask all these other questions. Like, what do you guys want? What do you need? What kind of development are you looking for? So yes, understanding what the demand is, understand your county, what are they looking for? And then kind of getting a sense for the builders. Cold call a couple builders. Hey, Paul, I noticed you guys are in the area. You guys building? What are you looking for? Oh, no, we're not building around here. Oh, no. No, we are way north now. Like that was two years ago we were building here. Okay, great. 
good to know. So again, back to this, find the experts. I'm not the expert. My job is to gather information. Honestly, (laughs) gather information. I record every call. I take every call transcript. I put it into AI and then I have it start to build reports for me and tell me what kind of land, what kind of development is needed in this market. And then I go find it. Yeah. sounds like a bit of that who, not how type of thing. Like I can, find, oh, yeah. I need to find the right person for this. The idea that I don't know enough about this to get into it. And it's almost like just start having the conversations and then find someone to help you. And then in that process, you're going to become. You even, you'll never, you not never, I can say never. The chances of you knowing as much as the surveyor in Spring Hill, Florida about (laughs) surveying. (laughs) Bob has been doing this for 30 years. He knows it all. I think that's the other thing with an entrepreneur where it's like, oh, I have to do it myself. I'll just do it myself. Mm -hmm. I'll just use land ID and I'll just cut it up myself. Yeah. Don't do that. You don't know what the topography is. You don't know the setbacks. You don't know the retention rules. Don't do it yourself. Ask for help. You'll be surprised at how many people will be willing to help you sometimes even for free if you can build a good relationship with them. That's so good. So people can start using AI now, get out there and start doing subdivisions, any kind of value adds <laughs> now, yesterday for both those things. Yeah. What other, are there any big AI things? You dropped a couple on there. Are there any big AI things you want to circle back on that automations that people should be definitely using? Or you feel like we covered kind of some for of the sure. big ones? We could talk about it for, it's. It, <laughs> I, I almost like the thing I want to say is every time before you do something, Go into AI, ChatGPT, Claude Perplexity and say, hey, I'm a land investor. I am about to research the zoning code for this area. If I was being efficient and was going to use AI, how would you recommend that I use Claude, use ChatGPT to help me with this process? Mm -hmm. Ask AI before you literally do anything. Like my executive assistant the other day, she messaged me and was like, we need a welcome email for, we're doing a minor subdivide course that starts in two weeks. I need a welcome email. Can you send me some copy? I mean, I could, or you could go into Claude because we have a Claude project all about our minor subdivide course. I have the entire agenda in there. I have the entire curriculum in there. I have all the details about the project and you could just go into that project and say, I need a welcome email to welcome them to the course. What did I even say? I think I literally said, I need need a three email sequence for after a person pays for the course to welcome them to the course. Nice. Had the whole background and just did it. But it's just every day. What are you doing and how can AI help you? I was actually going to mention this earlier, but you have a, a unique copywriting style. Are you using Claude with a prompt of a specific writer? Like yes. who, like what's I, your, what's I do your style? have a copywriter. I do have a copywriter. Okay. You um, want to keep that, you want to keep that the calendar I do. <laughs> copywriter? But we are working on an AI to kind of mimic his copywriting okay. and we're getting pretty close, but he has some edge to him, which at first mm-hmm. I was really uncomfortable with. Uh, Cause I'm like, Oh, I'm so people pleasing, but yeah. he's been really good. And so he's been interesting because he's like, no one can write like me. I'm like, watch me. I will. Yeah. A hundred percent be able to copy yeah, this. Not that I don't want you. I want you yeah. to still edit it. But if I'm building a, a widget around him right now. Yeah, that's so funny. I'm a lot like you in that way. I'm a people pleaser. I'm curious when you're with your friends, are you a little bit edgy or are you a people pleaser with them too? Like when the girls come over? No, I think the more you get to know me and the more I feel comfortable and you really know like the real me, the more I will get edgy for yeah. sure. Yeah, I feel I've been trying to bring that into like my internet world a little bit. I have this hidden personality where it's I'm with my friends, I'm not so mellow seeming. And so anyway, that's just Oh like, yeah. Once I and- get to know you, if I see something, especially with like my oh, I'm just so lucky with my girlfriends. They're we're all just so growth oriented. A lot of them have businesses. And so if I see something, like I will call them the F out and they do the exact same thing for me. And it is yeah. so good, but do I call my employees out? Absolutely not. Yeah. Should I be? Probably. They're calling me out. That's one of my big challenges is like really saying how I feel. So we're working yeah. on it. 
Yeah. Good. I'll be on that journey with you. So the two final questions that I usually end with one is, and this is just because you've mentioned books so many times, is there a book that you've given away the most or one that you just like always say, do this one? One book. It's called U2. So it's Y-O-U with the number two. And his name is Price Pritchett. And this is, I've mentioned the word quantum leap a couple times in here, but the phrase of the book is high velocity formula for multiplying your personal effectiveness using quantum leaps. So it accomplished far more in less time with only a fraction of the effort. So if if I could have a book that just defines my life's purpose, (laughs) this. So it's all about working hard. Working harder isn't going to get you there. Working smarter, like we talked about, find the best broker, find the best surveyor, find the best engineer. That feels light. That is not bad. Get some conversations going. Have them do what they do best. That's how we do a million dollar deal. It's not you learning how to be a surveyor, an engineer, a broker. (laughs) <laughs> in a market, but it, we get caught in our head. And so this is a, a phenomenal book starting to these principles. Wonderful. So final question, and then where people can find you online and what they should do to hit you up about learning more about AI. Okay. If you put one message on Twitter and everyone on all of Twitter would see it, what would you say to the world? And then tell people where to find you and what they should do to get coached by you. I think it's really to spend time working on your life and on your business, even on your life. I think we work on our business, but are you working on your life? The life that you really want to live. I'm 33. I don't know, about 50 years left. We don't think about that stuff. Guess what? It is just going to fly by and we are in it now. There is no mountain. There's no peak. We don't get there. There's no getting there. We are here right now. So really backing out and saying, what is my perfect day? What is the, literally, if I could just define it and my perfect day includes work. I love what I'm doing. It's so much fun. Some days, no, but most days, yes. And then once you define what you want your life to look like, let's pull levers to get there faster. So that could be AI, that could be building automation, that could be delegating, that could be a house manager, maybe housekeeper turned house manager. Don't forget about where you're going and what you're really doing every single day. I love that. Where can people find you? REIOptimize.com is my website. There is a little button at the top called Stay in Touch. We do tons of different boot camps, courses, all sorts of things. We have a minor subdivide boot camp or minor subdivide course that we're doing. I'm partnering with Rick Rao on that. That starts in a couple of weeks. And then this fall, I'm going to be doing another AI eight-week course. I'm in the middle of it right now. It is effing awesome. It is so good. And I, it just lights me up. I could do it all day. We had a two hour marathon session yesterday and that is really exciting. So that's going this fall. So get on the stay in touch, or you can go to my website, reioptimize.com. You can go to the top to training and courses and you'll see, learn more and join the wait list. So if you're interested in that, join the wait list. And then I always have lead gen courses happening. So if you want more leads, I'm your girl, just reach out hello reioptimize.com email so feel free to send us an email and then follow me on instagram so callan faulkner on instagram awesome callan you are the reason i named this podcast legends of land so, awesome, yeah. thank you so thank much you. thanks for coming on likewise appreciate it the legends of land show